Welcome guys to the top 10 helmet decks, aka the no skill decks, aka the decks that can lose a lot of advantage but still win because they are just too helmet as a lot of you guys would call it. Now keep in mind, just because it's on this list does not mean that the deck doesn't take any skill. It's more so that you could be relatively bad with the deck and not make the right plays or play it at its maximum efficiency and still win simply because it was overpowered at the time. And obviously there are going to be, of course, people that will say, yes, there are certain times where you need to make the right plays. Even with Dragon Rulers, yes, it did take skill to an extent, but a lot of times people would say the deck is a no skill helmet deck because it was a deck that you could make really poor decisions and still win because the deck was so dang strong. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into a lot of noteworthy mentions. Then we will jump into the decks that don't take very much thought process or very much thought in the game and you guys can go ahead and win even though you might not know exactly what you're doing in the game but let's go ahead and get started so first off burn of most sorts all right let's let's be honest here burn doesn't take very much thought process because you're not playing around your opponent most of the time most of the time you're trying to play solitaire trying to set it up so you just game your opponent as quickly as possible another deck that uh definitely would be considered in the helmet genre to most people keep in mind guys this is a list that we made together on the live stream so you guys can always uh type down below in the comment section below if you guys disagree or with any of the points just go ahead and feel free to go ahead and join in on the conversation but uh we'll jump into the top 10 list after we go over these uh noteworthy mentions but spell of judgment I i'm sure it's safe to say that this card you, it, why was it also a quick play you get to search for whatever the heck you wanted at. you can only actually want them per turn <laughs> did that even matter because you could just search the card anyways really really crazy stuff indeed but a uh, very simple deck to play you just make sure you activate this search 69 cards and then go ahead and search out a bunch of cards summon a jog and make it so your opponent cannot play set up a card where you get to banish any one card that would be a threat to the jog in the first place really really simple deck uh you could be absolutely terrible and get so much free advantage off of spellbook of judgment and that's why it's definitely uh, a noteworthy mention but once you guys see the top 10 you'll understand why i didn't quite make it because the top 10 is so dang good uh but next up um we have the Satellar knights Satellar knights was a very straightforward deck majority of the plays in the deck were uh some altair bring out the other guy and then go to a rank four Pretty much, that's just how the deck ran. It was a rank four spam deck. Very, very good deck. But of course, you had to make the right things at the right time. But a lot of people would argue that it was a very simple deck at its core. Uh, next up, the Rescue Cat, FTK, Dark Shrek Fighter, Shenanigans. Anything with Rescue Cat really ended up being an FTK kind of ish deck. Uh, even when X Sabers were a thing, when you would summon Rescue Cat, it was game. <laughs> like, that's just how it kind of worked. You could go into a Hyunlei, blow up, triple back rows, coal after a coal wave. It's just, it sealed the deal on a lot of different decks. But uh, nonetheless, Rescue Cat would definitely be a card. A lot of people would consider a helmet card, aka very simple, um, if you guys will. Uh, next up, a lot of players consider the ABC Dragon Buster deck to be a very helmet ish, easy easy play uh, deck simply because it is a very powerful deck uh, basically the field spell card is very very powerful but at the end of the day uh, it did require a little bit of thinking because you would have to attach the correct ones uh, at the right times because if you didn't uh, yeah you could definitely lose where you normally wouldn't have lost uh, next up dark worlds that was a deck that a lot of people were like oh my gosh everyone at my local is playing dark worlds and they keep wrecking me even though I, I know what i'm doing and they don't know what the heck they're doing they just go graph a pop whatever they don't even look at the back row because graph just destroys everything yep uh i mean there are times where i i myself have lost to a dark world player that i felt like he was not playing at its maximum efficiency and he won just part of certain decks um but uh, next up, Light Sworn. This has been a deck for the longest time. It's survived a lot of different ban lists. And it comes back time and time again because people will argue that uh, it's helmet, it's no skill, no thought process because it's all random. And at the end of the day, any card game is technically random. Even though you're sending random cards from your deck to the graveyard, most of the time you're never going to go through your deck anyway. So it's always just a free extra advantage for you. Uh, and Judgment Dragon still a very powerful card. And, you know, everyone that's played Yu-Gi-Oh!, 
for an extended period of time, you've lost to the deck. Everyone has. Uh, but next up, uh, Blue Eyes. Uh, a lot of people consider the new Blue Eyes to be a very straightforward deck. And uh, it doesn't have very many options for plays as another like Synchro deck would. I mean, generally you make the same Synchros time and time again, but they're just kind of just big beaters uh, for the most part. Yeah, again, you could argue every deck has its moments where you will be making certain things. Next up, uh, Infernoids. Reasoning. I mean, that that's what runs the deck. If Reasoning didn't exist, would you play Infernoids? Probably not. Actually, no. A lot more next door coming out, so maybe a few people will actually do it. But uh, next up, uh, Blaster Dragon Ruler of Infernos. Uh, just the Dragon Rulers in general. Uh, this doesn't really deserve a spot in the Helmet section as much as I think it deserves a spot in the No Skill section simply because it it is no skills certain times uh, when you play against this deck you're not if you're not playing this deck when this deck was the best you would lose to it even if the player was not skilled because the deck was so dang powerful i'm not saying the deck does not take any skill to play what i'm saying is that the deck can be very no skill and you could still win because the deck was it was absolutely out of control when the game first released them when they had all the baby dragons absolutely uh, just a very, very uh, strong deck to deal with. Next up, uh, Cosmos. Again, it kind of goes down to the same thing. You can lose a lot of advantage at any point. If you Dark Hole hit with a Farm Girl, you could game your opponent. Uh, crazy stuff. And uh, Cosmo Town is just still a crazy card. And a lot of people would argue, it would, back when the Cosmos first came out, it was like Itali Attack once game. <laughs> Which was, it was true, it did happen. And looking into the future, a lot of people will argue that the Zodiacs will be a helmet deck in the future. And uh, looking at the uh, results from a lot of tournaments, you can see that uh, Morat, very, very easy. Uh, again, helmet, easy, no skill. All those kind of, uh, you know, um, terminology kind of fall under the same idea. But uh, next up, Magic Spectres. Pretty much just summon all your monsters and uh, hopefully you get some of those Kirins to protect yourself unless Kirin hits that ban list. Uh, nonetheless, it's a pretty straightforward deck. Just go ahead and throw your monsters, set the stuff, and hopefully you'll be a-okay. Um, although, again, I know that every time I mention one deck, someone's going to be like, well, this deck takes skill. You have not played it. Thing is, guys, uh, I'm using your guys' suggestions from the first place. And again, you guys can comment down below what are the more helmet decks. But I feel like Magic Spectres, it's a relatively straightforward deck for the most part. Of course, again, every deck's going to have extensive plays where you need to think. But uh, for the most part, uh, a player can get the basic concepts of a Magic Spectre deck very, very easy. Uh, next up, uh, Yosenju's. Uh, very straightforward. I feel like this one's one of the more straightforward decks. Uh, very budget-friendly. A lot of people... Uh, that uh, play this deck, uh, they understand too. It's, you know, you go one, two, three. They make it really simple for you. They label them so you don't forget which ones you summon. But uh, yeah, for the most part, you send you very, very straightforward. Next up, uh, Perform Age, Perform Pal. When it was at its peak, it, this deck was crazy. You could play super bad and still win because triple Skulker Bad Joker, triple Monkey Board, it was crazy. Uh, you didn't really need very much thought process in which cards activate at the right time. Just throw it out. You, you get... Most of the time, you'd win just because uh, pendulums. Uh, next up, the Dino Rabbit, when this thing was popular. When this was $150, when Tour Guy was $150, it was a pretty straightforward deck at the end of the day. Uh, next up, uh, Frog Monarchs. Uh, I didn't really want to consider regular Monarchs in here. Some people would argue regular Monarchs was a no-skill deck as well. I consider Frog Monarchs a more no-skill and less thought process helmet-ish deck because it was Tribute Tree by Frog Summon Monarch. Card Trooper Mill cards, hopefully you hit the Treeborn Frog. That, that's kind of how the deck was. Uh, but uh, for the most part, relatively straightforward deck. Again, I know everyone will say, hey, wait, hold on. There's some times where you have to activate Battle Fader at the right. Okay, you'd be right. But uh, for the most part, if we're doing a top 10, we have to include uh, Monarchs on uh, the noteworthy mentions. Because we haven't even jumped into the top 10 list. But uh, anyways, next up. Herald of Perfection, the last card that we're going to mention here, because uh, Herald of Perfection, uh, just negate, just, I, I played against so many Herald of Perfection players, I would activate something that they didn't even negate, but they would just negate anyways, and they still win because they activated Dark Factor of Mass Production, and they have so many cards in their hand, they just negate every single thing that you do, and then you're just like, I can't believe I'm losing this, but you lose to it because you could not even Yu-Gi-Oh! 
But uh, that's it for the list of the contenders. Now let's go ahead and jump into the actual top 10. And uh, first off, this one, I just wanted to mention it a little bit lower uh, because it wasn't a card that a lot of you guys uh, played with during. Now this guy card was absolutely broken with Jogan. Last turn, basically what you would do is you summon a monster, your opponent summons a monster, who's ever the last monster on board wins. But you would summon a monster and then your opponent couldn't summon a monster and you would just win. It was really dumb. Uh, it was like broken game mechanics. <laughs> so yeah, nonetheless, I wanted to mention that card and it deserves a spot on the top 10, but uh, it was one of the nastiest things to run into. But uh, next up, we got Cliff Force Scout. Uh, pay eight, the meme still lives on, man. Cliff Force still seeing play here in 2016. But uh, nonetheless, uh, yeah, Kali's uh, pretty straightforward. Pay eight. Everyone made the joke that you don't, you need to think. You just pay eight. Yeah, I know. I I, I was gonna make a. I'll be making a vine on the this in 2017, pretty much, uh, because it's it's just always relevant to the pay eight joke. It, it just hasn't died. Nonetheless, uh, Bujin Yamato, Bujin, uh, yeah, attack, drop on us, attack, drop the other Bujin, you can't target me, I'm just gonna go ahead and just keep on attacking over your monsters and keep on adding the Bujins, really, 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 really straightforward deck. And this deck actually won a lot of tournaments, not like first place, but it definitely was seeing a ton of play because, uh, you know, it was really, relatively simple. Uh, next up, Evil Swarm, when you couldn't play the Dragons, this was, this was a, a budget-ish sort of a deck. Uh, but uh, relatively straightforward. Make all fear and hope your opponent uh, does not get over it. If your opponent doesn't get over it, then uh, basically your opponent cannot play. Therefore, you win by uh, basically disqualifying your opponent from you going in the first place. Next up, we got Six Samurais, yeah, the Make Shien Turbo deck. So many times I'd see Six Samurai players, they would make Shien over anything else. Like, it didn't matter the circumstances. Make Shien, make Shien, make Shien. If you guys played during the Six Samurai format, there were so many times where a Naturia Beast was going to be a thousand times better, but they were like, nah, I'm going to make Shien. Why? Because Shien is Shien. Like, I don't know. It was just like the mentality of the players that played. 90% of the players who play this deck. I mean, yeah, do ten, you other 10%, you guys are good. But 90% of the players, you guys know this. It was make Shein no matter what. Didn't matter if they could win the game by making something else. Make Shein. That's the, that was the goal. Like, that really was the goal of six Samurai players uh, for the most part. Next up, Exchange of the Spirit, FTK. Uh, yeah, that's uh, very relevant. It's an FTK. Your opponent didn't get to Yu-Gi-Oh. It goes kind of like last turn. It's just dumb. A uh, magic explosion. They've nerfed this so many times, but uh, time and time again, a magic explosion. It, it saw play with the monarchs, which was a relatively new deck. But uh, yeah, magic explosion has always been one of those decks where your opponent doesn't get to play. Therefore, people consider it no skill. Therefore, the no logic uh, in like uh, or like the no skill logic, I guess, applies because you're playing solitaire. You're not really playing against an actual player. Similar to the next two decks we're going to be talking about. Final countdown. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you activate it, Battle Fader, Battle Fader, Swift Scarecrow, Threatening Roar, Threatening Roar, Thunder of Ruler, but make sure your opponent declares their phases. There's a cheeky little play with that, but uh, nonetheless, Final Countdown would definitely be considered a Helmet deck by most Yu-Gi-Oh players. Uh, then Fry FTK, one of the most nightmarish formats ever. People hated it when they would be like, I'm a substitute, tribute everything in my deck. Mash Driver, uh, they've banned most of these things that, uh, like, they basically nerfed Final Countdown, they've banned the last turn, they've nerfed Exchange of the Spirit, uh, they've nerfed a lot of the things, and uh, they actually just completely just banned Substitute, and they, I believe, banned Mass Driver as well. But, uh, yeah, Substitute, a very, very broken card. Uh, it probably will never come back. I don't know, maybe one day, right? But, uh, nonetheless, uh, we do have our number one spot, and this one has to be the fan favorite Exodia because again it's a solitaire ish deck. The thing with Exodia guys though, and I wanted to put this with a number one simply because time after time there's been random formats where people run Exodia and people will complain about it and they'll be like, wow, no skill, you're not even interacting with your opponent. That is just part of Yu-Gi-Oh! Exodia is too iconic, so it has to have this number one spot simply because it will always be relevant in Yu-Gi-Oh! And you know, a couple years later down the line when we get some other cards that have draw power, Exodia will see play again. People will again complain about it. And that's just part of Exodia. The legacy will live on with our main man Exodia but uh, that is our list for our top 10 helmet no skill ish decks that you guys helped me make together live in the mix but if any of you guys disagree with that or you felt like I missed out on anything you guys let me know down below in that comment section below but thanks for watching guys and I am signing out